This video will cover four important topics. These topics are sales document, item category, schedule line, and copy control. Before starting out with any configuration activity, we have ensured that we give you an introduction to exactly where the business impact of the configuration will be taking place. So, we'll start out with showing you the transactional area of the business process, then we move towards the configuration, and once the configuration is complete, we come back to show you the impact of this configuration of these four areas. Our first topic is sales document. Now what exactly is a sales document? A sales document can be an inquiry, can be a quotation or can be a sales order, a quantity contract or a value contract. Now within the sales document, you have the option to further select if this will be a local inquiry or an export inquiry or will it be an export sales order or sales order for distributor or dealer. In order to differentiate different sales order or sales document type, basically in the system we create document types. We will start out with the first sales document type which is an inquiry. You will notice that different types of inquiries are available. These inquiry types or sales document type are the one which, which can be configured as per the business need. Similarly is the case with the quotation. Different types of quotation available and these can be configured for the, any business process. Finally, we will show you the sales order. In the sales order, you will notice that different order type or different sales document type can be created for any specific business need. These order type can be standard order or a special order. Now, we will move to move toward the configuration to show you where exactly the sales document types are created. Go in the SPRO, go in the sales and distribution, and then click on the sales document. Open up the node for sales document header. Click on the sales document type and you will notice that all the different sales document types are available be it an inquiry, a quotation or a sales order. Here we have selected a standard sales order type and you will notice that a lot of information has come from the standard system. It is a good idea to make use of the standard document types available so that minimum effort is needed in creating a new document type. If you wish to block a sales order for any reason, you can do it at this stage. All the information, all the field in these various document type are controlling function. Like for example, this one has to say that you have to create a new document type with reference to an inquiry or an order. Further, if you wish to make use of information record, you click on the relevant check boxes. In this example, a purchase order number must first be checked before a new sales order can be created. Whichever information you select or you deselect will eventually have controlling impact whenever this document type will be created. Further down, this is a screen sequence group which stipulate that this is a sales order but you can also have others like return or a quantity contract or a sales contract. But since we are creating a new sales document type with reference to standard sales order, we will make use of all the information available. 
The document type also ensure that you have all the relevant detail up to the level of shipping as well as the billing. Whichever information you decide to incorporate at this stage will eventually be having the controlling impact. If you would like to create immediate delivery, select the relevant option. If not, deselect. All the option related to billing is also given. You can select which billing document type must be created. There is a lot of information which may not need to be given. For example, if you are creating a sales order type, you do not need to give anything related to scheduling line or with reference to contract. We now have two options to create a new document type. We can copy this from the standard like we have done now. We give the new document type and the description. Here the new sales document type is ZOR1. And all the information will automatically be copied. This is a very safe way as well as ensuring that minimum effort is needed whenever you create a new sales document type. Save the new document type. It will take some time. The reason for this is because there are lots and lots of fields being copied. So the system will take some time to update all the relevant fields and ensure that you will not have to make much effort while creating new sales document type. Notice that different tables are available and within the table all these fields will be copied. Select on the OK icon And your new document type is created. Now let us check if this has actually been created or not. So we go on the sales order document type and we notice that the new sales document type ZOR1 is now available. We click on that and we are ready to Start using the new sales document type. Our next topic is item category. An item category is defined in the material master and act as a controlling function whenever sales order is created with reference to the specific material. In the material master, MM03 Give the material number followed by the selection of the sales view Press enter and give the organization data click enter In the sales organization 2 you will notice that general item category group and the item category group are given as NORM. This is where you define the item category in the material master. We will now go to the configuration and exactly notice where the item category is defined in the system. In the sales and distribution submodule, select the sales, then the sales document and click on the sales document item and you will see that define of item categories here different item categories are already defined we will select TAN and use the magnifying glass to get to the detail 
Again, you will notice that a lot of information is already given in the standard system and we can make use of that. It is best to make sure that minimum information is given when you're not sure which information will have what impact in the system. But if you're already aware of the functions of different fields, then you are free to use it as you need in your business process. If you wish to have weight and volume related information given, select the relevant checkbox. Same thing is also applicable for billing. So whenever this material will be created in the sales order, system will check for the billing plan. If there is any billing block that need to be followed for this material, we can give at this stage. We also need to keep in mind that different information must first be configured to be able to use at this stage. For pricing, you have different options available. For statistical information, if you would like the system to update, select the relevant option, otherwise deselect. Further down, if you wish to have batch determination for the material of this item category, you select, otherwise you don't select. The screen sequence is a standard given by SAP. So you need to make sure you don't change it unnecessarily. If this material is a make to order, then you also give the relevant detail on this area, which is the bill of material, oblique configuration. If the material is going through a variant configuration, you select the relevant option. So we will proceed with creating a item category with reference to the standard and we click on the copy as and we give the new item category which is L T A N and we give the description. The copy control function ensures that all all the relevant tables and fields are automatically copied and you don't have to make effort one by one. Again, if you save the item category, it will take some time because a lot of table and the fields are being updated. Check out all the tables and fields that are being updated and click OK. and a new item category is created. Let's go back. And the next step is the creation category group. This is also defined in the material master. Here again, it's a good idea to make use of the standard item category group, group if it is available for copying purposes. Otherwise, click on the new entry and create a new item category group. An item category group also ensure that different item categories are grouped together for business function purposes. Once the item category is saved, you go back. And then the item category usage is selected. You can check to make sure using the standard, otherwise you can proceed to create your own usage type. The video has covered just 
simple processes, but there is also a lot of configuration which need to be ensured to take place. Now assign the item categories. This is a very important screen. In here, you define the different sales document type with the item category usage. So here, the sales document type that we created, or we can make use of the standard sales order type. You click on the magnifying glass, and we see that for this sales order type OR, different item category groups are available. We can now proceed to create a new entry and here our recently created order type or the item category LTAN are given not only in the group but also in the item category. Once you have defined that you can proceed to save. So whenever this order type OR will be created, the new item category used will be LTAN and the group also is LTAN. Let us go back in the material master and now define the item category group. Select the sales organization two click enter, give the sales organization data, here replace the normal item category with the one just created, the newly, the newly created item category is LTAN, Save the material master. Now we go and create a new sales order to ensure that the new item category is being used or not. A new sales order. Give this customer number and then give the material. Give the quantity. As soon as you do that, you will notice that the new item category has been automatically available for you to proceed further. If there is any other error or information, you can take care of that, like in this case, the pricing error. Our next video covers the schedule line topic. A schedule line is used whenever a sales order is created to gain a better understanding about the scheduling by which the material must be delivered to a customer. Similarly, a scheduling lines are also used when you are creating a scheduling agreement for a customer. We will check to see this schedule line in the sales order and give the sales order number. And here you will notice that a previously created sales order have the scheduling line tab available. Click on that. And you will notice the scheduling that has been carried by the system. You will also notice the scheduling category. This CP, the scheduling category is very important and we will finally be making use of new scheduling category which will take care of the scheduling line in the system. And now that you know where scheduling line are made use of, we will proceed with the configuration. 
click on the sales and distribution sub module click on the sales and then scheduling line click on the first option to define a schedule line here again we can make use of the standard schedule line available the CP schedule category itself have certain control function in this case you will notice that the information which can be controlled related to delivery block if this item is relevant for delivery you select the checkbox if the scheduling line is also related to the purchasing function the procurement function you can select the relevant information on this stage so scheduling line not just serve the purpose of scheduling an order but also to facilitate in your procurement process the option 30 is delivery relevant scheduling line and then you have certain other function that you can make use of we will create a new scheduling line category with reference to the standard the new scheduling category is c9 once the information is saved the system will give you the prompt you can save that and move forward again you will notice there are a lot of fields and the tables are being updated this is very helpful if you're copying it with reference to a previously created item category or the scheduling line now the new scheduling line is available assign the scheduling line to the item category we just created the new item category LTAN and now in this item category we will select the new scheduling these scheduling lines are also copied so whenever you create a new sales order the new scheduling lines category will be automatically copied save all the information we will now go back and create a new material or we can make use of the existing material and we can use the information in the sales view since our general item category and the item category group has been defined as LTAN now when we go and create the new sales order type this document will also, will also be available finally our last topic is copy control a copy control is used to control one document type to another for example one inquiry type can be used to copy another inquiry type one sales order document type can be used to copy another sales document type similarly copy control can also be used to ensure that not only the header information is copied but also the information at the item level as well as the schedule and line level initially we will shut out the inquiry and we will see that this inquiry is can be created with reference to another inquiry quotation order or contract these functions are basically copied from the copy control function same as the case with sales order now this sales order can be created with reference to an inquiry quotation or another sales order any information which we give in the copy control will be used at this stage we now move toward the configuration of the copy control 
click on the sales and distribution sub module then sales area then click on the maintain copy control click on the first option here the difference is the target as well as the source document here we have given both of them that the sales document type OR and the target document type is OR is used for the copy control function on your left hand side you will also notice that the item and the scheduling line is available we are in the display mode right now but we can change it to the change mode again we will select the order type and then we use the magnifying glass to get into the detail here the target sales document type and the original document type are both the same we can change any information we want at this stage from the header level we move to the item level of the copy control function at the item level you will notice that it is the item category which is important so once you select the item category you can double click and you get several control functions which can be used as a copy function so the copy function is much more than the header information copying but also at the item level as well as the scheduling line level once you know which information need to be copied or which control function can be used you can proceed to create your own copy function as per your business need for example the pricing function you select the relevant option at this stage we are only evaluating what is available in the standard system you can make change in the original standard document type or you can use your own here the scheduling line that we just created in the last video you can define that at this stage we just clicked on the new entry which is not a very good option so what we do is we copy a new copy control with reference to the original document here the the target document will be the new document type we created in the previous video and we can simply copy all the information from this standard order type as previously explained this will save an enormous amount of time and effort as well as ensure that there is no mistake on the item level we select the relevant item category which we created just previously and we can give any information which we feel is important so whenever this order type the sales order document type zor1 will be used all the copy function defined on these screens will be used same thing with the scheduling line you can also eliminate those scheduling line which are not important for your business processes we need to keep in mind that scheduling lines are also used during materials requirement planning so we need to be careful with the information that we give you can delete the one you don't need and finally you can save the information once you're done you can do the similar step for the second step billing document to sales document here the information is with reference to the billing document the billing document can be a return document 
and the source document can be invoice. Again, the copy function is being used. Your source document will be your invoice. Your target document will be your return. So if the customer has returned a goods against a sales order, you will make use of the invoice as a reference document. Again, a lot of information can be changed as per your business need. But you need to be careful which information or which option will have what impact on your business process. Once you're through this, you can also check the scheduling line. Normally there are no scheduling line, but you still wish to have some details, you can do this at this stage.